Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we're gonna continue our series on hand planes by doing a little bit of a contest today. We're going to pit the cheapest hand plane against the most expensive hand plane. For the purposes of this video, we're going to focus on just smoothing planes. So planes that are meant for the purpose of smoothing. And if you're not familiar, to give you a little bit of background on why smoothing planes are called smoothing planes, hundreds of years ago when traditional hand planes were used, they didn't have sandpaper. They had smoothing planes to do that specific purpose and that task of getting a finished surface or getting a surface ready for joinery. A finished smooth surface is what you should strive for when you're using a smoothing plane. If you're not getting that result, you're not actually using the smoothing plane to its fullest potential. And that is done by taking off very thin ribbons of wood shavings, all in one go, all in one pass, and getting a nice smooth surface. For today's contest, I'm going to level the playing field by focusing on not only smoothing planes, but smoothing planes that are out of the box. The plane irons have not been honed at all. Usually when you get a new plane, you want to take the plane iron out and do a finish honing. I'm going to go with the factory honed irons that come with the planes. So we're going to use two wood hand planes and one iron hand plane. Now one thing to note, I am not being paid by any of the companies that make the hand planes featured in this video today. This is a completely unbiased contest and review. The iron hand plane that I'm going to use is the number four smoothing plane by Veritas. The Veritas number four smoothing plane comes in at $289. That was my cost. That's what I paid for it. The next hand plane made in Germany is the ECE Gents hand plane. This is a smoothing plane as well. It's a smaller smoothing plane, but it does very much the same work that the number four would do. It's somewhere in between a number four and a number three, I guess. It's beautifully designed in the European tradition. These are just great to look at. They are fantastic. It actually brings me back to my childhood. My father had a couple of these. Oddly enough, it's the first type of hand plane that I used when I was a little kid in my dad's workshop. So this brings back memories and I'm eager to try this out as well. This one comes in at $87.50. A lot of traditional woodworkers will still stick with the wooden body hand planes and they swear by them and so we're going to use this one. And then finally the other wooden hand plane that I'm going to try today is a Japanese hand plane that I bought on Amazon. This also is a smoothing plane. It will do about the same job as the ECE plane that I just showed you. This one came in at $18 and change on Amazon. It is one of the most inexpensive hand planes and also the simplest in design. There's no wedge in here. It's just the iron and the body. That's it. There are no other parts to this plane. I'm eager to see how well this does against the other two hand planes. So with that, let's get to it. So the first place you want to start is you want to get yourself a decent plane hammer. This plane hammer is one that I purchased online at Lee Valley Tools and it was around $40. You can make your own obviously if you can get your hands on some brass stock, even some round stock, and you can make your own plane hammer quite easily. Uh, the one thing you don't want to use is a regular hammer on your wooden hand planes. If you don't have a plane hammer, not to worry. You can use, say, like a softwood wedge. This is a wedge that I made out of cedar. This is just a cedar offcut, and I just cut it into this shape so that it would work with the plane as well. It won't hurt the wood, it won't hurt the steel, and it works fine as a temporary plane hammer. What I personally like to do is have my plane propped up on a piece of wood like this. I hit the back, and the blade and the wedge comes out. It's a little faster because that's what the hammer is designed for. I press my wedge in. 
And with this plain hammer you can fix the skew by tapping the sides if you need to. But with the wooden end, a couple of taps, that's it. And then When you get this set right, it does a beautiful job. Okay, and now for the moment of truth. It's going to be very difficult to pick a winner, first of all, because each plane performed beautifully. And most surprisingly, the cheapest plane performed quite well once I had it uh, set the right way. The Veritas plane, as expected, took no time at all to set up. And uh, we've got a very thin shaving out of it. So thin, in fact, that it's already falling apart on me. Uh, it was pretty dry wood that I used for this test, so that's the shaving from this one. And I don't have any scientific gear to read the microns, how many microns each shaving is. So we're going to test these shavings using a very unscientific method, but a method that works pretty well nonetheless. I'm going to take this handy dandy little coaster here. Using this coaster, I'm hoping you guys can see this on camera because it's uh, not always easy to see these things up close, but I'm going to take each shaving, I'm going to put it down, so this is the one from Veritas. Based on the transparency of each shaving, that is basically uh, how much of this bird I can see through the shaving will tell me how thin that shaving is. So on this one, I can pretty much see right through it. This is the Veritas shaving, and I have labeled each of these so I didn't get them mixed up. The second one I'll look at is the ECE plane. That's the wooden European hand plane. And that one, wow. So that one gave me an even better result. This is really hard to decide, but I think just based on what you can see on camera here, you can see more of the color of the bird through the shaving. So excellent performance by the ECE hand plane. Last but not least, is our little Japanese hand plane, $18 hand plane. This is the shaving it produced. I, I would say the, the difference is almost too close to call because I can still see the bird's head through the shaving. And yeah, I would say on the level of transparency, it's almost identical to the other two. So where does that leave us? That tells us that, as expected, the Veritas number 4 smoothing plane, right out of the box, gave us excellent results with a minimum of setup. If you are a beginner woodworker, it's so easy to adjust and set up, not unlike a Stanley Bailey plane, but these are actually even easier than Stanley Bailey planes, I find, personally. You don't need a ton of skill to learn how to use one of these planes. These are really effective and easy to use right out of the box. Probably the most user-friendly planes that I've ever tried are Veritas planes. 
I don't know what compares to it, but the design is excellent. Definitely for the cost, that's what you would expect coming right out of the box. The ECE plane blew me away. I just basically got to call this one. The ECE plane beat the Veritas plane by a very, very, very literally thin margin. It's almost too close to call uh, as a contest anyway, but for the cost, given that this ECE plane, this gents plane, which is a third or less than a third of the cost of the Veritas number four smoothing plane, did an amazing job. I'm absolutely blown away with how good this German made ECE plane is. Learning how to set these up takes a bit of skill and a bit of practice. So it's going to take a little longer to master a wooden hand plane like this, but I encourage every woodworker to try it. And certainly for the cost, you can't go wrong. $87.50 for the ECE plane versus $289 for the Veritas plane. It's a no brainer. If I were a beginner woodworker, I would not hesitate to spend $87.50 for this hand plane. If you take care of the wooden plane, it will outlast you in your lifetime. Now, finally, we go to the $18.50. And again, to be fair to Japanese hand planes, this is the cheapest Japanese hand plane that I could find that was brand new. Japanese tool enthusiasts will laugh their heads off at this one because getting a real high quality Japanese hand plane will cost you some money. It'll set you back a few hundred dollars. You know, this was not a fair contest for this hand plane at all, but I threw it in because I wanted to see if this actually could beat the other two hand planes or at least come out on par with the other two hand planes. It definitely held up to that test. It came out pretty much on par. It performed beautifully for an $18.50 hand plane. Actually, never mind. Even for any kind of hand plane, it performed beautifully right out of the box. Like I said, the design is as simple as can be. Uh, learning how to adjust these and using the plane hammer with a little finesse will get you excellent results. It takes practice, it takes a little more dedication. If you are not used to the pull action of these hand planes, it will take you a little longer to get the hang of that. The principle of using a Japanese hand plane, well, I think it applies to all wooden hand planes. You never force the action of the hand plane. It should pretty much effortlessly pull that shaving off the surface of the wood in one smooth motion. And that is what you strive for when you're using wooden hand planes. And certainly with the pull action, that is a little tricky at first, but when you get used to it, it actually makes total sense. Well, that concludes a test between three different hand planes of three different price ranges. And I've got to say, it was a lot closer than I anticipated that it would be. I'm really impressed with this little $18 hand plane. If you are a beginner and you are just getting your workshop set up or you've got limited space and a limited budget, this is not a bad option for you. When you watch videos of Japanese carpenters using these hand planes, the one thing that I notice anyway is that they pull through in one smooth continuous motion without any chattering, any stopping or pausing. In my opinion, that's what you strive for when it comes to all smoothing planes, whether you're pushing or pulling. The EC hand plane uh, falls in between the other two. Again, there is no clear winner, but if I had to pick a winner, I'd say the EC is the winner in this particular contest, just because overall performance and the value of this hand plane makes it just amazing to work with. Uh, you know, they call it the gents hand plane, which kind of makes me think that it's meant for part-time woodworkers, some people who dabble in woodwork, but really when you go to use this, it is a serious smoothing plane and it does work really well. And of course, if you really love your hand planes and you really want a good smoothing hand plane, the Veritas number no. four is a very good hand plane. The one category that this hand plane could beat the other two in is convenience and ease of setup. It took literally seconds to set this up and get the depth that I needed and get to work. So if you want something that's going to work really well out of the box, it's going to require less skill and finesse in terms of setup. 
the number four Veritas hand plane is for you. If you can afford it, go for it. I highly recommend it. It'll do its job straight away and with no hassle at all. If you'd like to help me continue to make and edit these videos, head on over to my donation page right over here. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. There are a couple more videos on this side you can watch. Until next time, thanks for watching and have a great day.